All right, welcome back. This is uh, chapter 7. This is part 3 um, of module 10. And so we're now going to turn to what's to the different trends in metals, non-metals, and um, metalloids. And so the properties that we've been discussing are just properties of individual atoms. Okay, And with the exception of the noble gases, none of the elements exist in nature as individual atoms. And so now we can look at the periodic trends and properties that involve large complex or large co collection of atoms. Okay, and we can group the elements into metals, which are shown here in this like beige color. We have our non-metals, which are in the green, and we have metalloids, which are in the purple. Okay, and so the more an element exhibits the physical and chemical properties of the metals, you're going to have greater metallic character. Okay, which pretty much makes sense. So we can first talk about metals. So metals are shiny. They conduct heat and electricity. They're malleable and ductile. Ductile. Um, they're solids at room temperature. Um, they have low ionization energies, thus they form cations easily. And you can see that with the oxidation states of the elements that are listed here. Okay. And so you would know that sodium wants to give up an electron, so it's going to be Na plus. Magnesium will want to give up two electrons, so Mg two plus, and so forth. Okay. Um, so we should look at some of the common reactions that take place with metals. Okay. So there's a number of common chemical reactions that occur with metals. And you should be familiar with these. You should be able to predict the products of the reaction. Um, and so, really, a reaction between a metal and a non-metal will form ionic substances. Okay, and we remember that back from uh, earlier uh, in the semester. And so, one example is we can say, okay, metal oxides and metal halides. Um, both of these are going to end up being ionic solids. Okay. Well, a reaction between um, <clears throat> Basically, metal oxides, which are basic, okay, react with water to form metal hydroxides. Okay? And if we think about this, if metal oxides react with water to form metal hydroxides, then the metal oxide plus acid is just like an acid plus a base reaction, where we form a salt plus water. Okay? So these are just some of the basic reactions that you should be familiar with. Okay? Well, we, we can then turn to nonmetals. Okay? So nonmetals are usually a solid, liquid, or gas. Okay? They're poor conductors of heat and electricity. Okay, for the most part, these make up things like gasoline, motor oils, different plastics. There's these long carbon chains called hydrocarbons. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> and they're going to have lower melting points than metals. Um, seven of the non-metals exist as diatomic molecules, like hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. These are all exist as diatomic molecules, which we talked about before. And you shouldn't memorize these. You should know that these are diatomic molecules. Okay. Lastly, nonmetals are going to um, will gain enough electrons to fill its outermost occupied P subshell to give it uh, that noble gas configuration where it has that uh, valence electrons filled or valence shell filled. Well, some basic reactions of nonmetals include the, that nonmetal oxides react with water will produce acid. Okay, so nonmetal oxides are acidic, right? And a non-metal oxide reacting with a base then will form salt plus water. So once again, we just have basically our acidic solution reacting with a base, which is going to form that salt plus water as well. So metalloids, there's not a whole lot to say about them. Basically, uh, it's just what the name sounds like. Um, they're part metal, part non-metal, um, and they have characteristics of both. Okay. So. <clears throat> The last part of this lecture is really going to focus on looking at certain groups of the periodic table. And, if we, and so if we remember that elements in the same group have very similar properties. Okay? For example, we look at the group 1A. These are the alkali metals. right? And so these all have low densities, low melting points. Right? And so it's important to remember the reactivity of these metals is going to increase as you move down the periodic table. <coughs> Now reactions of the alkali metals um, can really be broken down mostly into four common reactions. Okay, so alkali metals can react with hydrides, okay, and basically form metal hydrides. They can react with sulfur to form metal sulfides. Um, they can react with water to form metal hydroxides plus hydrogen gas. Okay, um, alternatively, they can react with oxygen. In determining uh, what type of oxygen it's reacting with, um, can actually tell you a lot. So lithium reacts with oxygen to form this lithium um, <coughs> lithium oxide. Okay, um, sodium and potassium will react with oxygen to form oxide and peroxide. So it could form either. 
Um, and then you have potassium, rubidium, and cesium, which are going to form these superoxide um, compounds. And so you should read over that in the textbook and get a clear understanding of the difference between those. Um, one cool thing that I like to talk about about the alkali metal ions is that they're colorless. Okay, but if you expose them to a flame, they emit these bright colors. Okay, which are shown here. Right, and so this is really just due to the ions um, being reduced to these gaseous metal metal atoms. Um, and the increase in temperature is going to excite the electrons to an excited state. Okay? But when that electron returns back to the ground state, it releases energy in the form of light. Right? And so this, this wavelength then varies for each of these elements. And this kind of goes back to chapter 6 a little bit. Um, so then we can turn to group 2A, which is the alkaline earth metals. These are mostly solids at room temperature. Okay? They're harder, more dense, and they have higher melting points than group 1A. Um, and once again, the reactivity is going to increase as you move down the periodic table. And so there's some of these basic reactions that we should understand with the alkaline earth metals. Um, really only the alkaline earth metals of calcium are larger, so farther down on the periodic table, uh, will actually react with water to produce um, that metal hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Okay, so that's shown here in this reaction. Okay, and you can see that over here on the right in the figure. Um, you should also note that the alkaline earth metals are going to want to give away two electrons, right? We talked about magnesium. Magnesium wants to give up two electrons so it can be more like the um, noble gases. And so it's going to take on that plus two ion form. Okay? And so here you can see magnesium reacts with chloride, two different chloride molecules, in order to get MgCl2, and so it's happy. Um, so now we'll actually turn and look at one of the most important elements, which is hydrogen. Okay? Hydrogen, you can kind of think of as a loner. Okay? It doesn't really belong to any particular group. Okay? It's a colorless diatomic uh, gas, and it really only likes to form molecular compounds uh, with other nonmetals. So the reaction between a nonmetal and a hydrogen is usually very exothermic. Okay? And so if you don't believe me, you can go look up this reaction of hydrogen gas reacting with oxygen gas um, producing water. Okay? It's actually a very violent and um, explosive reaction. Okay? So I encourage you to go look that up. Um, <clears throat> the last thing is if hydrogen gains an electron. Whoops. Sorry about that. So if hydrogen gains an electron, it actually has a negative charge, and it's called the hydride ion. Okay, which is designated as H minus, and if it loses an electron, it becomes a proton and designated as H plus. Okay, and when you start talking about aqueous chemistry, aqueous chemistry, you're really talking about um, transfer of a proton. Um, we can then turn to the oxygen group, okay, which is interesting because all of group 6A is solid, or are solids except for oxygen, okay, which is a gas. And group 6A is kind of cool because it contains metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. So if we look down the chart, right, we have these different um, properties. Um, one thing I do encourage you to do, because I don't want to carry these lectures out for too long, is you should look, uh, read this section, and understand more about the properties of oxygen and sulfur. Uh, the last two groups we're going to talk about aren't too exciting. Um, the halogens um, are just a special class of elements because they have these highly negative electron affinities, okay, because they want to gain an electron. Now all the halogens exist as a diatomic molecules, and so they have to react to gain two electrons, okay, one for each of those atoms, and so that's why you see the X2 reacts with two electrons, and each of those then become the X minus ion, okay. Um, halogens will react with hydrogen to form a gaseous hydrogen halide compound. You should know that common reaction as well. And then the last thing we talk about are the noble gases, um, which are just plain boring to me because they're highly unreactive. Um, they're all nonmetals and monoatomic gases. Um, so there's really not too much to say about the noble gases. Uh, so that's really it for chapter seven. Uh, you should read over the chapter, be familiar with all the properties and trends for different groups um, and specific atoms. Um, and then make sure you look at the practice problems as well. That should help, as well as the homework set. So that concludes chapter 7.